Hello and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. We're at Knowledge 17. My name is Carlos Casanova. We're here with Dave Frank from uh, Captain Trago and Kirsten McGowan. Hi, Carlos. So, Hi. David, you know, I, we know that you guys do a lot of process work and uh, not just the you know, really superficial stuff. So you really kind of dig deep into uh, the process areas. One of them in particular that I, I always find interesting is, um, is the problem management space yeah. and how I find a lot of organizations really don't end up doing true project, uh, problem management. Um, some just jump right into root cause when an executive maybe makes enough noise. Sure. Um, but I, don't, I definitely don't see a lot of the, you know, the proactive piece of it. That's the piece that you know, bothers me where there, I see tremendous value if, uh, if you do that. So I know you kind of specialize in that space. So can you talk a little bit about what that is and, and why, you know, again, from that business perspective, why it's so important that they really do it properly? Sure. You know, the, the problem management space is so interesting because organizations tend to spread it out across so many different groups. Mm -hmm. So problem management as a function becomes an administrative function and really not a problem solving function. So w one of the uh, analogies I like to use is if you have termites in your house, if they're all in one place, um, you know, tearing at the foundation, it's pretty easy to see and mitigate it. Sure. But when they're spread out in different places in the house, you don't see the impact until the whole house collapses. Right. And that's such a difficult place to be in organizations when you're pushing um, you know, real problems back out into the field and they get caught in that whirlwind of day-to-day -day business that just, you know, hey, we, we've, we've, we've had cleanup in aisle five, the incident guys have taken, <laughs> taken this, we're gonna wait till it falls over again. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the, the, the impact that we see. Really yeah. hard to aggregate that and then get it to a level where folks make decisions. Right, right, right. So what's, what's the first step that businesses need to take to, to start getting there? Yeah, I think the first step is to really get their arms around what does the true portfolio of problems look like mm -hmm. and to begin to manage that like you would a uh, project management office, right? right? So where you really understand the impact, urgency, and the true business, um, long-term business impact. Right, that right. comes from those issues. <clears throat> yeah, and that's and that's the biggest thing that like we really like said see is that that correlation of the impact to mm -hmm. what does it really mean to the business, and again, <clears throat> the the you know from an engineering perspective, I always see it's like that preventative side, mm -hmm. you know, where when you find it this time, and you figure out that it's not just you know hey it's not in one spot we do have termites throughout the whole house, right. mm -hmm. what do we do? Do we spot? You know, exterminate, or do we actually need to do a whole you know whole thing, and and also the um, you know, what do we do when we encounter terminates again? Right. You know, the workarounds and all the, you know, the known issues. Um, and I, I just don't, I mean, are we making progress, I guess, you know, and I don't, <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know if I want to be saddened. Sure, but <laughs> yeah. I, I think in pockets we are, certainly. Um, and as we work with clients, that's one of the big things that, that we spend time trying to, to help them understand. Um, you know, the, the level of decision making within the organization, right, um, tends to be so siloed between applications groups that when my stuff is working, I don't care about what others, what's happening yeah. other places. And senior leadership does. Yeah. They just don't have visibility into it. So any way that we can add that visibility and get things like problem review boards mm -hmm. together that actually you know, look at the portfolio as a whole and begin to start helping folks make those trade-offs. Because they're all trade-offs at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? If I'm going to fix something, that means something else has to sit on the shelf for a little while. Right. And what's good for the business isn't necessarily good for the individual all the time. And, and helping folks make those trade-offs and, and feel good about what they're doing uh, is a really big stepping stone to, the, to how you get better at that. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's almost a little bit downheartening at times. I mean, Carlos and I have been doing this for uh, too many, you know, many more years than we want to admit to. Mm -hmm. but. You know, 20 years ago we were going into businesses and we're still seeing the same situations today as, as we were then. So what can we do to change it? <laughs> <It's a good laughs> we'll give you all wow. the time you need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not, nothing like having eight minutes to fix yeah. the world, right? Um, it, it's got to start with you know, really cl clearly defining the problem. Yeah. Um, and every organization's a little bit different in what that looks like. but. You know, there's so many tools and quick fixes and we only want to do this deep because mm -hmm. we got to move on to something else. And sometimes an inch deep isn't enough right. to truly make an impact. Right. Um, and you've got to be bought into that. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't think there's any silver bullet mm -hmm. that's going to yeah. fix it overnight. But when you get a good leadership team mm -hmm. and folks that, uh, you know, truly understand the value of long-term improvement yeah. um, and not, 
you know, what does Wall Street want in the next three months? Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a big driver. So sure. I, I would say a lot of the places where we see the most benefit are not-for-profits or, or privately held companies where folks say, hey, we've got a long view on this and we yeah. understand that it's not about the newest, coolest functionality. We need that for the business, but we also need a stable platform. Right. So how, what other pieces, I mean, I know like, you know, say knowledge management, what other pieces are <clears throat> sort of foundational to make that happen? Because obviously it, it doesn't happen on its own. Sure. Uh, and I think that's part of the problem that I think these, uh, a lot of organizations get overwhelmed with, oh, but we have to have this, we have to have mm -hmm. that in order to do this. And you still need to, and I, I hate the saying, you know, elephant one bite at a time thing. Right. But there are some foundational mm -hmm. pieces that have to be there. Sure. So, you know, talk about that a little bit. So I think, you know, on the front side of it, if you're looking at an end-to-end -end view, it's really good inputs, right? Are we, are we truly capturing the data and information that makes a difference? And are we putting that in a place where problem solvers can solve problems? Right. On the back side then is when we come out with a root cause and we want to get something done, is it going into a project management position that we're going to execute on it? Right. Because there's a lot of stuff that ends up getting stuck right there in the chain. Yep. And, and I, in IT I find that we are incredible at project management when it comes to building something new and putting in a yep. new, the newest, latest, yep. better than anybody in any industry. Yep. Uh, and when it comes to fixing something that's been broken, it falls off the shelf. Right. right. It's not exciting, is it? It isn't. <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's the problem, right? So, but again, it, there's, there's a, a risk reward or just a, a reward model there that is really incenting mm -hmm. the very behaviors that we don't want. Sure. It's like, hey, you know, David, I need this fixed. Mm -hmm. I need it tomorrow. And you're like, okay, if I, if I had until Friday, I could fix it once and for all for the yeah. whole enterprise, right. but I've got four other things stacked up already. Sure. You know what? Uh, you know, can I? No, no, no. I'm just gonna do tomorrow. Right. And three weeks from now, you're gonna do tomorrow again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. And just going to keep doing it again yeah, and again and, and again. I think right. the key word you said is leadership. Sure. And I, I think it's we, we have such weak leadership in many mm -hmm. instances that uh, I don't know if, you know, how do we get past mm -hmm. it? Yeah, well, visibility is a big part of that, though, too, yeah. right? So a lot of times when we go in and do analyses in companies, it's really easy to focus on the high critical, the stuff that blows up. Sure. And there's either customer impact or we know there's going to be customer impact. Um, when we go back and start to do the time studies and start to look at where are you spending most of your time? It's that one incident that happens a minute a day, every day for the year. Yes. And now I've spent essentially two full work weeks fixing the same thing when I could have done it, as you said, in three days. Yeah. Right. So giving visibility into that um, mm. and then having leadership say, hey, we actually get it now. You do need the extra two days. Right. And some of this other stuff can, can be pushed yeah. aside. That visibility is so key. and it. You know, no matter what tool you use, you've got to be able to search that information correctly sure. and present yeah. it in a format that you can see yeah. it. So and you actually see the long-term exactly. benefits exactly. to taking that extra three days Absolutely. And, and doing something. Well, it's, it's the old, you know, I don't have time to, to fix it the right way, mm -hmm. but I have plenty of time to fix it 20 times. Sure. Yeah. You sure. Know, so it, it's yeah, it's one of those. I think, sadly, I think we'll be talking about this in a year uh, or two yeah. still. We hopefully, will. it's right. less of a thing. But uh, thank you very much for yeah. joining us. Look forward to hopefully a better story. You know, if you have you uh, on in a year or so, that you fix the world with uh, <laughs> with problems. in eight minutes. <laughs> That'd be great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me. Appreciate okay. the time. Thanks, thank babe. you.